All right, guys, welcome back to Sweat Equity. Um, today's video is going to be rebuilding the Tough Torque K46 uh, hydrostatic transmission. Um, I've already got it up here on the bench. The fluid's already drained out of it. I've loosened all of the 12 millimeter bolts, but I have not taken the cover off of it yet. So we're going to do that together and see what uh, it looks like inside. Um, before we do that, I just kind of want to go around the, the tractors, kind of show what's up with it. Um, I polished the hood, the plastic hood on it. Um, we uh, you can kind of see the, the shine in it there. Um, basically, we wet sanded it with uh, 600 grit, then 1000, then 2000, and then I buffed it with. Um, a buffer and a foam pad with some like it was literally um this is rubbing compound but it was like the turtle wax version of polishing compound and it's got a little bit of haze on it right now and, i mean you can still see like a few little you know swirls in it but it looks 10 times better um i was actually able to save the 145 stickers they came off in one piece and still had enough stick them to go up there so if they're Stupid expensive, I'll re-glue them on and I'll have to buy the new ones that go down here that say John Deere down the side. Um, the fender has been repainted. You know, it looks fine. It's not, doesn't look as shiny as the um, the hood, but you know, it's good, it's gonna get dirty anyway. Deck's been painted, that whole thing's been rebuilt. That's been a video, I've seen that. Um, I got the new rubber pedal on here um did the full service on it so it's got a new fuel filter new air filter uh oil change and new spark plugs um it's got a new star solenoid that actually went bad the battery is new so uh, i also um took the headlight lenses out and the part this was all chrome like all the way across it had that like unibrow look which i just think really just makes it look a lot older so i painted that black except for like i taped off the the part that actually reflects the light and painted everything like a satin black so i think that makes it look a lot better than it did that in the hood and we actually buffed down here too so all right Enough about that. I'll get you set up and we'll start tearing into this thing. All right, so we got it set up here. Um, we got all the bolts loose. And um, full disclaimer on this, I will totally be watching the Tarrell Fixes All video over here on my laptop um, as I'm doing this. That's, you know, a good video to give you pretty good instructions on how to do it. Um, the difference between the one that he did and the one that I'm doing here is that his had a leak. It was low in fluid. Um, you've seen in my previous video that I, I did a fluid change on this and the fluid was full. There was a pretty decent amount of debris on the magnet that's at the top, um, which I think means that there has just been some damage inside. So, um, you know, I've got all these loose... The ones around the outside are all the same length. Um, so anyway, so yeah, the one that he had basically just wasn't moving at all, if I remember, or very little. These two are a little bit longer. And this one runs, I mean, I can, I can use it, but it's slow. And if you get, if you've been running it for a little while, it pretty much just kind of loses pretty much any kind of momentum at all. So, um, there's definitely something going on in here. So I'm going to go ahead and pry the cover off. There's just a lot of um, little places that you can kind of get a screwdriver under and just kind of gently break the, the seal. This doesn't have a gasket. It's just a uh, actual, um, you know, form in place gasket type of a thing. And this right here is not going, this is for the bracket. This is not part of the, that one is however that uh, yeah, so everything is out. So there's a lot of these little things, though they look very delicate. So yeah, 
bad because this was not leaking at all. There was no signs of any of the seals being bad. Um, this has about 936 hours on it. It's off of a John Deere 145. You see in my other videos, I'm doing like a restoration on it. It's gently um all right, the seal is breaking now. There we go. Let's go around to some of the other ones. Try it out. Okay. So there's the, the lid. I'm not really going to see too much in there. Just some of the gasket kind of got in there a little bit. Just sit that off to the side for now. Quick little look around in here. It doesn't seem like there's any like hard damage. Like all the gears are fine. There wasn't anything, any kind of issues like that. It actually didn't make a lot of noise. It was pretty quiet when it worked. Probably the quietest one I've used. Um, but you can see right here, this magnet right here is pretty, pretty well covered in a lot of metal. Hopefully you can see that. So that's the only real indication that I see. I mean, just at first glance, um, you know, that something is, uh, got some kind of wear, you know, cause these things don't have clutches in them like an automatic transmission has, which would be, you know, normal to see something like that, um, on a magnet in an automatic transmission in a car. But in something like this, you know, trying to look on these teeth here on the gears. You know, I see a little bit of wear, but nothing too crazy. You know, it had oil in it, so theoretically there shouldn't be any like main hard failures, like something like a gear just let go or lost some teeth or anything like that. So. Um, it should just be a matter of just replacing, you know, like this part right here, pretty much. So, I'm gonna bring up the video here. Pretty sure if you've watched, uh, if you're watching this video, you've probably seen Terrell's video. Terrell fixes all. Definitely a great channel. This is the filter. This looks. I only take this little piece out. Pretty clean. And then this is your brake. See, See, here's your brake disc. It's really dirty. The kit's supposed See to come with a new, new magnet. Pretty magnets. simple. And it's got a lot of, a lot of metal on it. I think his has le less metal than mine does for sure. I right, only take this little piece out. This, Set this. that aside because we're gonna pull this pump part off. And then this is your brake. See, here's your brake disc. Right here is the brake. See how the brakes work? This is all external on the other trackers I had. It keeps it from getting seized up this way. So 14 millimeter socket. Need a stronger wrench. <laughs> See if mine does it. I can use the gun. Carefully. Three the same size. So, there's springs, springs in there. This is our little pump action. So we just kind of have to work this out. Seems to 
pretty tight in there. Missing something? I just took the three bolts out. Usually, when something fights you that much, you just need to make sure you're doing it right. I mean, I just watched him. Let that out of there. I got my turkey baker to help suck out the oil. I'm still working on getting mine out. I need to pull this. I don't think I'm going to pull that up. Just sit that to where everything stays. It should be. Try to sit assemblies together as best you can, just so it's just less the have to. Actually, I didn't have to take that out because this. Never mind. Well, it doesn't hurt anything. It's fine. Thing up too badly here. It's kind of you know moving a little bit. All of a sudden I'm gonna move it and it's gonna fly out of there and pieces are gonna go flying. I do remember him saying you want to make sure that this goes in the way you took it out because it'll go in reverse when you're trying to go forward and vice versa if you flip this little wedge shape thing around. Hmm well three bolts that I see. I don't understand. It's like all this stuff is just really kind of stuck in here pretty good. Which I guess the brake comes out. I got my turkey baker. The brake does come out with it. So I guess we could try to Too. No, I don't like that. It looks like aluminum, so you can't just go crazy on this. He says as he pulls out a cold chisel. Yeah, it's just not budging. Well, here's my little, this is what I was looking for a minute ago. Smaller pry bar. That's got some movement out of it. I feel a little better. But it's just not moving. It's just like bending up a little bit right there, and that's it. Alright, what am I missing? Is there something else I have to take off? Oh, you know what? I might have to take. Maybe I missed a step. I'm going to try to dump more of the fluid out. I think I fast forward into the video a little bit, and I think, let's see, let's see if I can get this in the thing without spilling parts. 
watch it fall out on me right now. I think I was supposed to take this uh, this off first. Pretty sure that's it. Like I said, when something's fighting you, stop and realize that there's something you're missing. All right, so full disclaimer, getting this out is not easy, at least not for me. And I, I just noticed after watching uh, Terrell's video three times that they cut the camera from where he kind of first took the bolts out, started prying around it, and then actually like was getting it to lift out. So this did not want to move and still hasn't come out, but I had to give this a few love taps with my air hammer. I mean, it was gentle. It was literally just like, you know, and this part's going to be replaced right here, this block. So I thought it wouldn't matter if it kind of mangled it up a little bit because it's going to be replaced. So I kind of just gave it a couple love taps while I was prying up right here and it did kind of break loose, but it still is not just lifting right out of here. Um, it looks like this whole part comes out together. It's going to be a matter of kind of rocking it a little bit. I did not have to take that little piece off of the other side, um, this piece, at least not as of yet. It looked like maybe that was holding in from the bottom side, but I don't think it was. I mean, now that, I've <laughs> yeah, whatever, it's fine. Um, so you can see where it's lifting up in the back. It still isn't just lifting right out. You know it's just gonna like eventually just break loose and like everything's gonna go flying. put it like gently in the vise by this bracket right here and put a block on the other side just kind of stabilize it and just kind of gave it a couple little taps which didn't crack anything you can kind of see a little marring but nothing that's going to affect anything um and i got it to come up i mean it's definitely up about three quarters of an inch here and like a quarter inch right here so right now it's kind of cocked which is probably why it doesn't want to lift out so Yeah, so this is not easy. Definitely made this look a lot easier than it is. Try to get it more straight so it's not cockeyed on anything. There we go. Jesus. All right, I'm gonna try to keep this together. So it comes out with the brake. All right, we're just gonna set that over here for now. This is, I forget what they actually call this, but this is definitely like one of the main 
the main things. I'm not sure if this is the actual motor um, or not, but I'm going to go ahead and just, there's a little bit of oil still in there. I'm just going to try to suck it out with a turkey baster. most of it and all these little pins and these little pins with springs are gonna come out at you if you're not careful and we want to check this this washer here and there's another spring down here this is what we want to look at probably better I guess to do this where it's more like that because these came out but it's okay yeah we can definitely see um, I mean it's definitely I mean, it's not terrible nothing like crazy but let's see I can definitely see. Almost looks like um, swirl marks and paint. Nothing crazy here that I noticed. Just, you know, a little bit of wear, but not something that I would think would really cause it to lose power like that, like it does. Same thing on that either. It's one washer. Bottom side has like a bevel in it, which I guess runs in these ball bearings right here. There's no he said, make sure there's no grooves in this. I mean, the only groove I see is this. So unless that's a groove. And we want to inspect this. I want to make sure this is nice and smooth. Yeah, a little pin just fell out. See, it fell out again. <laughs> Be aware of that little pin. No, oh, there's my pin. Right there. Yeah, it just falls right there. And then again, we're going to have. Got a washer under here. these little pistons with spring. Want to 
check these surfaces here. And then again, you're going to want to check the differential here too. That all looks good. My part's just like on a, on a car or a, a truck. Got these little I'm gonna turn it like that. Pins here. I'll turn both sides, but one can be held. Allows you to go around the turns. Springs. Batter that spring is fatter on the one end than the other. It wouldn't go back together that way anyway. It's backwards if you put it in backwards. Okay. Just getting a little ahead of me here. It looks good. Be careful, things don't just go fall. Yep, see, they just fell out. So, you got these things which have a check ball down inside. Pretty sure these come in the kit. It's a little piece like that, and it has. A spring and a check ball. So the check ball goes in first, then the spring, and then this goes over top of it. And it all looks okay. So so far it's looking exactly like the one that Terrell has taken apart as well. So maybe his got had a leak, but maybe that wasn't the issue. So this is what we got. Came in the kit. These are the two motor, swash plate, whatever you want to call them. This is the main, um, I don't know, pump body, what do they call it? Center case. Center case, yes. This is something. And this looks like it has the new filter. The sealant. And it comes with a gallon of their tough torque oil. Mine did not come with that. I should have just gotten that. Now, but it's okay. I got you that. remember, I was saying I was just going to replace the seals. So when I talked to the people at tough torque and I told them that those magnets had a lot of metal on there, they suggested that I just go ahead and do a whole rebuild on it. Plus, that's what you're going to want to see anyway. You ain't going to want to see me just replacing the seals. The amount of metal that's on so mine is definitely more than it was on his. Was that, until we install all the new parts, put the cover on, then we'll flip it over and start changing the seals. You don't have to disassemble it, say, to get the seals out. You know, like if you needed to change this top seal, you don't have to take this shaft out to pop the seal out. There's a washer right there. And then here's your differential. And if you did want to pull the axles out, you take this out. And then when you pull on the axle a little bit, there's another clip right here. It might just be. That's why you got to have one of these mag. You know, sometimes you have stacked tolerances. You know, like you can look at this part and be like, okay, well, this part is good. You look at all the parts and they all look good individually if every other part was like brand new but when you have all the things together i mean this thing does still work it does still drive but it just it's just lacking that last like 20 percent of its power and you know it could just be all these little grooves all around everything there's a little bit here there's a little bit you know, these are just slightly wore down to be a little bit, have a little bit of play. I mean, there's really nothing noticeable. Um, there could also just be, like I did find a little bit of debris right here. You can see some debris. This just looks like dirt. It's like brown. I'm not sure what would be brown in here. You know, there could be some debris clogging up 
a passage inside of here somewhere. When I did my E36 front end upgrade, everything that I took off, you know, they, some of the things were slightly worn. You know, the boots were torn on the ball joints and, you know, they, they, they moved freely, but when you really, you know, when you grabbed it and moved, tried to move the, the ball itself, it, like in its socket, it didn't have any real noticeable play. <clears throat> but when I replaced everything all together, it tightened up the steering and made the steering, you know, a little bit sharper, right? Used to have driving at 50 miles an hour, you know, there was, there was some definite play on center in the wheel where now you do that and it's, it's just a little bit better where it's, you know, it, 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 there isn't any actual play anymore. None of the parts individually were bad, really. Where if you checked them all, you know, however you would go around with the pry bar, check ball joints, shake the tire, the wheel for the tie rods, things like that. Nothing really felt bad, but all of it together made for a sloppy front end. And that might be the kind of a thing that we're dealing with here. The thing still works. It just doesn't work as well as it, it could. And it could just be a lot, a little bit of wear and tear everywhere. And maybe a little bit of debris blocking a passage somewhere that I can't see inside of here. I'm trying to wear these medium gloves and they end up just breaking. I mean, these all look nice and new. It's, you know, I guess it's a machine surface. I mean, it would have to be, right? It almost looks like an oil filter um, housing or something for, you know, I mean, that one definitely, you, know, you don't really feel it. Yeah, actually, you can kind of feel it. So perfectly smooth, a little bit of something there. Don't know. Just just trying to make observations of what looks different. This is where those two little pins go. I think it comes with the new ones in this bag right here. Yeah. Right. Everything out of that. So that's a new filter. These are seals. What's the the kit the like the the fill cap? Just a whole bunch of seals, O-rings. Which I will not be showing in this video. Um, I may not actually be replacing them right now. I may I might be stupid on that. You should do that. Um, but this is was ma mainly just to kind of look at another one and see what it looks like. Or the ones that are already on YouTube, which I think is just this one, and um, I forget the other guy, Double Wide Six, is that it? Something like that. Uh, I think he did one several years ago. Okay, so yeah, there's some little filter screens right here, which I thought they went in these things. Didn't see them. Unless they're still down in there. Don't seem to be anything in there. So I see the new. Yeah, okay, so these are different actually. These are the same. No, they're not. Mine has a little cut in the end of it. Or these are just flat. 
So I will have to reuse these, I guess. I know there was two different types. And I don't think there's anything wrong with these at all. It's basically like check valves, I think. That's well, a little disappointing though. Yeah, because these these are the ones he was talking about where the, the one end of the spring is is bigger. Mine are the same size. So then it's just a matter of some some O-rings and seals. And this is the sealant. Comes with a uh, you just cut this off to get whatever size you want. The form in place gasket. Premium RTV silicone gasket maker sealant. Okay, so this has three new magnets and one piece of magnet broken off of it already. I think you're adding a magnet, if I remember. There's two in there right now, or there was two. You're adding a third. And then this. Not sure where this goes yet. Not all O-rings and seals need to be used when repairing the units. Drain the oil from the unit, do not reuse the oil. Well, that's kind of common sense, but I guess some people would want to be cheap on that. They say you want to make sure you clean out the inside and flush out the inside of the, the unit with brake cleaner. It says units that are not cleaned properly could result in premature failure or void the parts warranty. Brake cleaner, brake parts cleaner can be used to clean the internals. Make sure you coat the mating surfaces with oil when you put things together. Make sure you reinstall the bypass pin and washer from the original case and motor cylinder block. I think that would be this right here. You can use a light amount of automotive grease or Vaseline to keep the two parts in position while putting them back in. That, that is a good tip to use in any case. Vaseline or, or um, general purpose grease usually are fine. They won't hurt anything. Um, the grease will keep things like this just wants to fall out. So if you put some grease on it, you'll stick it in there and it'll want to stay in place. If the unit has IDS valves, this is figure three. Yeah, so there's two options. I have this one with the spring, the valve, the spring, and the ball. Or you have the filter, which is the parts that I got. It says if the unit has IDS valves, be sure to note the correct position of the ball or the filter compared to the drawing. Keep in mind some units may not have the IDS system, but the, the new center cases will have pilot holes. However, the holes will not be machined out for IDS. This is simply in the mold of the new center case, so no worries. Yeah, so I guess it could have it, but they're not like nice and shiny like they are on this one. Note orientation of brake actuator and brake shoe during reassembly. I left all that, that's all pretty much the shoes or pucks, whatever they want to call these things. I didn't touch those. New style magnet holder and two magnets. See figure six on back. Okay, so that's what this piece is that had the magnets in it. So this is going to this is going to go here. Of course, there's two magnets that would go in that. And then they show the bulk torques, the smaller bolts that go on the outside are 16 to 18 foot pounds, and the center case bolts. The three bigger ones are 33 to 40 foot pounds. Once all parts are installed, check to see everything is rotating freely. You must obtain proper oil level and oil type before running the unit. Oil level should be maintained at 20 to 25 millimeters or three quarters to an inch below the lip of the cap. And that's when it's cold, basically. They say tough to work tech oil is highly recommended when rebuilding the transaxle, but they say do not use ATF automatic transmission fluid. I think you can pretty much use anything from 5W30 up to the 5W uh, or 15W50. 5W50. This is what I'm going to use. All right, so guys, um, I'm sorry. The uh, GoPro SD card seems to have gotten corrupt, and I, I don't have another one 
right now. It's the second time this has happened. Um, trying to film this video for the uh, transmission rebuild. So I'm just going to do a quick little overview. I did not find anything other than a lot of debris on the magnets. This is a new magnet in here. Um, this is one of the old ones right here. Um, the other magnet looked pretty much like that. Um, this is, you know, basically you're not supposed to really have anything on these magnets. I mean, maybe a little bit would be okay, but it's not like an automatic car transmission where you have clutch wear and, and you're going to see that on the magnet and it's okay as long as you don't see big chunks. In something like this, it, it, there's no clutches. It's just these um, these little pistons. It's like a swash plate kind of a thing. And when it turns, I don't know if I can really, I don't, can't really, let's see. Oops. It just sits in there. Yeah, I can't really turn it too easily. Um, I'll get that back in there. But basically it was these three parts that get replaced. Like one of these is the pump, one of these is called the motor, and this is the center case. So these three things are get, you get replaced when you rebuild it. The rest of what's in here is basically just the, the differential gears, um, and then there's just this gear that comes down to the, the brake. The brake is internal on this. And then basically I just cleaned up all the old gasket material. Um, and this is the, the cover. This actually is the bottom of it. Um, I cleaned this all up. I, you know, brake cleaned everything out, just flushed everything out the best I could. Um, you do put gasket maker down this part as well to keep the two chambers separate. And um, basically that's it. So I'm just hoping that that solves my issue because pretty much everything, you know, as far as the hydrostatic portion is, is new. Um, so it should be good to go but yeah um you know the the Terrell fixes all video this one right here um is you know basically what you want to watch when you you do one of these I was going to do the video just to kind of see like mainly if like I found something that was different from his but it was pretty much the same thing none of the parts really looked bad like there's no major grooves on any of these things it's got oil all covering it now so it's hard to see but you know none of these things really look terrible um you can just see some you know like swirl marks or something in it but there's like nothing really that majorly you know stands out but i think just all of it together like stack tolerances of everything together you know um created it where it was down about you know 20 30 percent of its power i guess and you know it couldn't quite get up some of the hills that you know it would normally be able to do and it was a little slow just in general so i'm going to go ahead and get it back together get it on the tractor try to get another sd card for the gopro and uh see if this thing actually works oh i did want to point out one thing um getting this whole center case out of here is not as easy as it looks in terrell's video and I, after I watched his video through like three times in that section, I realized that he cut the camera. This uh, took some some persuasion to get it out. It's just these three 14 millimeter bolts here. But um, you really, like what I ended up actually doing since I knew I was replacing this part is I gave it a couple of love taps with my air hammer. Not hard, just enough, a couple of little, little bumps with, you know, a screwdriver under some of these areas and I was able to get it to break free and pull it out. So this is not easy to get out and it's not particularly easy to get back in. Um, you kind of just have to, you know, get all this lined up and then I kind of just got the bolt started and um, just kind of like gradually turned them down and, and brought this whole case all the way flush in there. Um, and I went with 35 foot pounds on those which does seem like it's high but they are they are uh m10 uh bolts so they're you know kind of hefty they're around the outside are m8s a little bit thinner but these are m m10s mm -hmm. 